Hi everyone, we're now in the final week of the class. Um, last week was a tough one and there were a few concepts that people struggled with, so I wanted to review those a bit. Um, also last week you had your follow-up proposals due, um, and I'll be reading them throughout the week and sending you feedback through Moodle. Um, first, on the repeated measures chapter, um, one issue that I saw was that design complete or incomplete, tells you about whether participants see each level of the independent variable more than once. Design does not tell you about how the order is determined. Um, so the things that determine the order are the Latin square or the specified orders for an incomplete design or ABVA or block randomization for a complete design. So complete and incomplete just tells you about how many times each person sees each level of the independent variable. Um, for complex designs, there were a number of points of confusion, so I thought it might be helpful to go over an example. So I was going to go over a few points from your complex designs worksheet. Um, the main effects are the effect of one variable while ignoring the other. So if you're talking about the main effect of problem difficulty, um, you shouldn't talk anything about training in your response. So if we're looking at the main effect of problem difficulty, we would look at the means, the average means for easy and the average means for hard, um, and just compare those. Um, what you do need to discuss, though, is the how problem difficulty affected the dependent variable, which in this case is problem solving. So based on the fact that there was a difference between means for the easy versus hard condition, what, would we, what we would say is there was a main effect of difficulty with easy scoring higher on problem solving than hard conditions. So that tells you really what we can interpret from the experiment. Um, the other big thing with complex designs was interaction effects. So remember that we discussed two ways of testing an interaction effect. The subtraction method where you either subtract across the rows or up and down. Um, and if the numbers that you get are different, it indicates an interaction. Um, the other way of testing an interaction is by graphing the means. Um, and remember that when you graph the means, if the lines are not parallel, there is an interaction effect. These are just two ways of graphing the same material, but either way you graph it, whether you put easy and hard here or here, um, what you can see is the lines are not parallel. They would interact at some point. So we can say that there is an interaction effect. Um, once you've tested whether there is or is not an interaction effect, you need to interpret it. Um, and this is where you use the simple main effects. That is how you interpret the interaction. Basically, you pick one independent variable to start with. Let's start with difficulty. And say what happens at each level of the other independent variable, in this case, training. So what we would say is for easy, there's no difference in problem solving between trained and untrained. They're essentially the same. However, for hard problems, those in the trained condition do much better on problem solving compared to those in the untrained. And basically what we've done with these simple main effects is methodically explain each of the four data points and how they relate to each other. So that's it. Now if we go to this week, for this week we have um, your final project, your final paper is due. And basically, you need to make my suge suggested revisions to your summary and follow-up proposals and combine them into one paper. Um, you might need to, and I would encourage you to add in a transition paragraph discussing the weaknesses of the previous study and how your follow-up study addressed those weaknesses. Um, you should also make sure you've finalized your APA formatting, um, and be sure to check the assignment guidelines to make sure you've met all criteria before submitting. This week, we actually are just covering one chapter on data analysis and interpretation. Um, note that you only need to read the select pages, um, and also that your book includes a lot of formulas, but you're only responsible for the ones that are listed in the PowerPoints. Um, you've got one uh, assignment and one test for this chapter. Be aware that the material is kind of challenging, so be prepared. Also, there are a few other course wrap-up activities that you can be working on or thinking about. Um, first is a class effectiveness survey that's anonymous and you can do for extra credit. Basically, in online classes, I just want to get your feedback about what worked and what didn't work for you. So I appreciate any of your thoughts on that. Um, also, there's an optional final exam um, that will open next Monday at 8 a.m. and will close next Tuesday at 11.55 p.m. Um, this test is going to be 80 multiple choice items and you'll have 100 minutes. But note that unlike other tests, 
you can't select multiple answers for each item. Also be aware that when the final exam opens on Monday morning, all of your old other tests will no longer be visible. So if you want to study by reviewing your old tests, you should do that before Monday morning. Um, basically, if you score higher um, on your final exam than your test average, then your final exam score will replace that. If you score lower, your final exam score will not count. So it can't hurt you, it can only help you. And that will wrap up our class. I'll send a brief summary next week as well. Um, but I hope you have a great week. Let me know if you have any questions, and if we don't have contact, have a great rest of your summer.